A lot of people have been telling me that Days Gone deserves a lot more love than it initially got back in April of 2019. And to think I had never played the game. So I decided to take the plunge and give Days Gone a try. So let's give Days Gone a try. A lot of people have been telling me to play this game. <laughs> Is it even good? Two hours later. you know me, I love post-apocalyptic games. My obvious favourite being The Last of Us. There's something about the post-apocalyptic world that I love, and to think we lived it ourselves in 2020. <laughs> so I've played over five hours of Days Gone, so this is going to be my initial impressions of the game. And in <sighs> preparation for this video, I decided to look at IGN's review of this game whilst I was eating breakfast. These issues combine with a dreary, uninteresting world to add up to an uneven and mostly too- Is she smoking crack? How the hell did they give it a 6.5? When I first booted up the game, I thought the story would be a generic post-apocalyptic zombie game. That's what I thought. You play as Deacon and you quickly see that during the start of this pandemic, your wife gets seriously injured and there's only room for two more people on the helicopter. Oh, come off it. You can't get one more person. It's like Rose of Titanic. There's room, you stupid Jack. There is. You decide to stay with your buddy Boozer, who's also really badly injured. You also say to your wife that I'm going to find you one day. Fast forward and you're traveling with your buddy Boozer. You do jobs, you earn credits, you're not a very good person, you kill people, but you're also trying to survive. I don't think Deacon claims to be a good person and he reminds me a little bit of Joel because he knows he's not a good person, but he has to do what he's got to do. Shit goes down with your buddy, he gets injured again and your job is to complete missions, build trust and alliances with different camps in order to earn more money, improve your bike and get new weapons. The story is actually quite deep and swiftly after the start of the game I started being really invested in the story I wanted to know how the hell did they get to this point and what happened to his wife and in regards to Deacon, I like him. He's a bit of a non-emotional character to people you meet, but I think that is down to what has happened to him. It's a heartless world and this is who he's learned to be in order to survive. Boozer's sick. He's got blood poisoning. I had no place else to go. Blood poisoning. But the one thing about this character is that he does care for his buddy. Throughout the game, you experience flashbacks from when you're with your wife. And I really, really like this. It gave me a lot more of a backstory about his wife. You saw the chemistry between them. <sighs> There'll be any minute now. All right, so all right, all right, screw it, let's go. And no offense, IGN, what do you mean some of the dialogue is cheesy? The dialogue's uh, pretty bad. But only if you promise to ride me as much as you ride your bike. She would say that. She's obviously single. <laughs> She's single. What I was more excited about this game was to experience the open world aspect of this game. I'm traveling on my bike is going to get quite boring. I'm probably going to want to fast travel everywhere. The best feeling about this game is flipping riding my bike. I absolutely loved it and I can't believe how much I loved it. Riding that bike feels so satisfying. I feel free. I can feel the emptiness in this world. The graphics are unbelievable. It's just so good to control this bike. And I haven't really upgraded my bike yet. I have not got bored of this and I love the fact that you can upgrade your bike as you go along in the game. As you build more trust in certain camps, you can then upgrade your bike and fully customize it. Just like I'm starting to. You can increase speed, decrease the sound, and you can even put nitrous on your bike. I feel like if I work hard and complete bounties, missions, I then earn the right to improve the most important thing in this game, which is your bike. What well, is quite funny as well, when I am riding my bike into the camp, my god, this one guy just keeps like, he thinks I'm gonna run him over. How the hell has this guy survived all this time? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh.
Also, hearing IGN's review about how it feels empty, it, the buildings inside don't feel very detailed, all of this stuff, I was just so confused about this review. Well, it's pretty enough at a glance, but its uninspired interiors and barren exteriors certainly don't feel like it. It's uninteresting and it's bland. What else made me feel like I was in a post-apocalyptic world is that as I'm riding my bike, I would find some fuel to refuel my bike, which I really do love and I feel like it adds to the urgency that you're on your own and you need to make sure you plan a route and make sure you stop and look for fuel, otherwise you don't want to be stuck with these zombies. That's it. I would stop and find a building and make sure to explore every corner to find materials, bottles for molotovs, health equipment. I love the open world and so far I cannot wait to explore more of it and improve my abilities as well as my bike. From time to time you have to save the odd NPC stuck on a car or something and yeah that's quite repetitive but the thing is I actually wanted to make sure I do these little side quests because you can then send them to a different camp and you can then increase your trust on those certain camps which would then allow you to eventually get more up Upgrade. So I felt like there was a need for me to do it and I enjoyed it. We interrupt this program to bring you your mom. Thank you for everyone liking the video. <laughs> you better have. As you guys know, the goal for this channel is to hit 100,000 subscribers and also to make this my full-time job. That is the ultimate dream. The reason I wanna make it full-time is that I don't have sleepless nights and I'm just working every day and I just don't wanna look like on camera that I'm extremely fatigued. I, I do look it, my eyes look absolutely mash up. So I just wanna say, if you wanna support the channel, I'm over at Buy Me A Coffee. You know I like my coffee. <laughs> Or you can hit a super thanks on YouTube. Or if you want, we've got a lot of members. <coughs> or you could join our memberships where you get loyalty badges, mm, some super cool emojis. <laughs> and also you get priority to all of the replies on YouTube. Well, listen, cameraman, <laughs> are you subscribed to my channel? <laughs> no, no. Now, I'm not gonna lie, at first when I was thrown into this game, the missions menu was a little bit confusing. I was a bit like, what should I do first? Shall I do this mission or this one? I'm a, it's a bit overwhelming. But then after I completed a mission, it would then automatically start me on another mission. And I thought this was really easy because I just let the game decide what I should do next. Missions so far have varied from clearing out a freaker's nest, which is freaking scary. At first I would try and kill him and I'm like, nope, <laughs> forget it, I'm gone on my bike. No, 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 forget, forget that, forget that I am staying here all day until they go. <laughs> no, no chance. No chance. After I got a lot more confident with running and the controls, I then freaking loved it when I was in these little camps and I was like, you know what? I'm going to headshot a few of these enemies and then I'm going to use my Molotov and I'm going to just beat them all. <laughs> it became so satisfying. You had missions to recover some kit from a certain area and that's when I encountered this huge mother freaker. Well, yeah, I did die a few times at the start. You had missions that required you to listen to these Nero officers as they are collecting data and you find out bit by bit what happened to the infected. It can be hard, but all you have to do is distract officers in order to progress. Stay in the bushes and listen to their conversation. This made me more invested in the story because then you start to find out what they have found out about the infected. And as I went on, oh my gosh, wow, what's happening here? It wasn't really like The Last of Us where Last of Us Part 2 just basically put the zombies to the side. You have bounties on people you have to kill or capture and when you're riding you have to shoot their tires or drive into them <laughs> or you may be traveling with an ally on your bike or on foot to complete a certain task or find out about the hordes of freakers and again i love the variety from just walking with an ally to traveling to another area he does shout a bit, but obviously it's probably because of the bike, but <laughs> it was a bit loud. Yeah, uh, Mercury or something. The one in Sherman's camp. And when you are shooting these damn freakers, oh my gosh, I love it. I love the gameplay. When I say how incredible I feel when I'm headshotting these freakers and enemies, oh my gosh, the gunplay is so satisfying. <laughs> wow. 
I'm either using my handgun or a silencer or my rifle and just flipping shooting them in the head. And I haven't even upgraded or got even better weapons yet. You can sneak up to enemies and then stab them quietly, which is also really cool. Or when I got more confident, I lured a pack of freakers and I got my pipe bong and boom, explode. The main comparison to this gunplay is The Last of Us Part 1 and Part 2, but to be honest, I feel like Part 2 deviated from the zombie apocalyptic world so much that I'm comparing it more to The Last of Us Part 1. At the moment, I like the freedom and gun mechanics in Days Gone than The Last of Us Part 1, and it's probably because it's much more of an open world game than Part 1. Obviously, they're two totally different games in the same genre. I feel like Days Gone is the open world I've always wanted, and it's only taken me years to play it. <laughs> Finally! All thanks to you guys. As of this video, I haven't come across a horde yet. I'm too scared. And I know when I eventually do, maybe I have when this video is published, I'll let you know in the comments how I found it. But I ain't looking forward to that. As I said, I came across this massive freaker and at first I was just trying to shoot him and I died. But then I realized I needed to lure him over. I stayed quiet and I lured him over to these petrol things and then I blew them up to take chunks of his health off, which was obviously much more effective. And that was so much fun. And man, nearly the end of that fight, oh my gosh, I had a little bit of life and he was just coming at me. It was just so much fun. I did get a bit scared. I was got a bit shook. I'm sweating thinking about it. Coming to the weapons and upgrades. The weapons are incredible. They're quick. They're effective. The word is satisfying. I keep using that word because this game feels so satisfying. You can upgrade weapons in each camp. And when you build up more trust, then you can buy and acquire better weapons. But for now, I love my assault rifle because of those sweet headshots. And my sniper rifle, which from afar, my god, gets an instant kill once you aim for the head. I can only imagine there are a lot better weapons, which I can see at each door. But at the moment, I only have have access to a bow, handgun, assault rifle and my sniper rifle. Also a shotgun but I prefer an assault rifle because being close and far is a bit more effective because if I just use the shotgun that's only good for close combat. One mission I jumped through the flipping roof, went in and just killed a bunch of guys. 007. still hurts. For me at the moment of playing Days Gone, I feel like this is such an underrated game. If you like The Last of Us but you want a less linear game and a bit more open world along with an amazing story, then Days Gone is your game. I quickly got attached to the story and the main characters. Deacon is a character that deep down is a good person but looks like he's given up on people. I know there are quite a few twists in the game so I'm excited to see how his character develops the deeper he finds out about the virus and his wife. The gunplay is some of the best I've played with satisfying weapons and an open world I'm excited to explore. And of course that damn bike riding. This is one of the best feelings I've got traveling in an open world game. No offense IGN, you gave Valhalla an 8 out of 10. <laughs> That open world burnt me out so much quicker. I remember hating riding my horse. I was just going through ledges. I just didn't really care. It's upsetting knowing that there probably isn't going to be a Days Gone 2, which I truly think is such a letdown. What they built for the PS4 with Days Gone is such an amazing game. But for some reason, Sony do not want Bend Studio to create a sequel. But you will remake Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we, we need that, guys. <laughs> We, we need it. It only came out the other day. According to director of Days Gone, Shane Layden departed killed the studio's chances of a sequel. I believe he was a former head of Sony. So even though he loved the game, after he left, they said it was no chance. What's more baffling is that the game sold over 8 million copies in a year and a half. But I remember at the time, this game was classed as not a commercial success. I'm still confused over IGN's review. I will keep you updated about how I find the game. So make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. But... Wow, I am loving it. Playing it alongside Hogwarts. It's nice playing those two games. Also, I've got Resident Evil 4 to play. Have you played Days Gone? I want to know your thoughts. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. 17 gaming franchises that are dying 
or dead. Shout out to Eric, great video. I would add Mortal Kombat to that list. I leave you an idea for a video, Last of Us 1 versus Last of Us 2 and why fans hate it. Stay strong. Thanks for the comment, my man. And yeah, you could say Mortal Kombat. It's been around for a long time and I know there's a new game coming out soon, but I was thinking, how, how are they gonna keep this franchise alive? Like I've got Mortal Kombat 11, but it's, it's in this case. Anyways, as of this video, I've had to do this video on a weekday evening because I'm going to Dorset this weekend or weekend gone because this video comes out and you know i'm gonna be away from my playstation for a few days <laughs> don't be sad don't be sad <laughs>and this was pretty good, so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna follow what the game does tell- As you guys know, this- From on- From traveling with- From traveling- As of this video- You know, if I have a shotgun, I can- I, so, 17 gaming- 17 gaming project-